This is October, November 2021. Variant for the two question. For 1A, one mark. They ask you what is meant by centripetal acceleration. The word center, centri means towards the center. So you can explain that centripetal acceleration is the acceleration experienced by an object undergoing uniform circular motion. And the acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity or you can say directed towards the center of the circle. Then in part B, an unpowered toy car moves freely along a smooth track that is initially horizontal. The track contains the vertical loop around which the car travels as shown in figure 1.1. The mass of the car is 230 gram and the diameter of the loop is 62 centimeter. Assume that the resistive forces acting on the car are negligible. When you read this passage here, you find there are five things you should unlike. Maybe you can unlike more than five things. We will explain some of the things here in detail. The toy car is unpowered. This means that as the toy car moves along the horizontal track, the kinetic energy will not increase. This is because Unpowered means no work is done on the toy car that causes the kinetic energy to increase. Number two, smooth track means that there's no frictional force on the track. The lack of frictional force and the fact that the resistive forces acting on the car are negligible shows that no work is done against either the friction or resistive forces. If work is done by the car against friction or resistive forces, then some of the kinetic energy of the car will be converted to heat energy or thermal energy. That means the kinetic energy of the car will decrease. So the conclusion from number one, number two, and number five is that the kinetic energy of the car remains constant when it moves along the horizontal track. However, when the car moves from X to Y, some of the kinetic energy at X will be changed to gravitational potential energy as the toy car gains height. That means the toy car will lose kinetic energy, but you will gain an equal quantity of potential energy. The to However, the total kinetic energy EK and the total potential gravitational potential energy EP is constant as a toy car travels from X to Y. The relationship between the energy at X and Y is given by this equation. EKX is a kinetic energy at X. EKY is a kinetic energy at your Y. And the EPY is a gravitational potential energy at Y. So therefore, the car slow down from X to Y. So that means when you do this question, you need to know the principle of conservation of energy and energy conversion from one form to another form. In part one, state what happened to the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration as it moves around the loop from X to Y. We know that the velocity decreases from X to Y. And we want to know how the acceleration changes. Therefore, you must get the relationship between your A and your V. So the equation we use to get this relationship is A equals to V squared divided by radius. Since the radius is given, and you can see that since the radius is constant, your A is directly proportional to V squared. So when your V decreases, your A also decreases. This is why the answer is decreases one mark. Then for part two, explain. If the car remains in contact with the track, why the centripetal acceleration of the car at point Y must be larger than, must be greater than 9.8 meter per second square. 9.8 meter per second square is actually the acceleration due to gravity. To answer this question, we look at the steps here. Step one, we draw a free body diagram for the car at Y. W is the weight of the car. R is a contact force exerted by the track on the car. And A is a centripetal acceleration. C is the center of the vertical loop. You can see that the two forces are acting towards your C. So then you apply Newton's second law, F equals MA. You find that the two forces is W and the contact force. 
and your A is a centripetal acceleration, which is taken to be V squared divided by R. Therefore, your W plus contact force is equal to MV squared divided by the radius of the circle. Therefore, R equals to MV squared divided by the radius minus W, or you can say R equals to MV squared over radius minus MG. For the car to stay on track, your R must be greater than zero. That means your MV squared divided by radius minus MG must be greater than zero. That means your MV squared over R must be greater than MG. MV squared over R radius is the centripetal force. MG is a weight. Therefore, the centripetal force must be larger than the weight of the car. Or you can cancel off your M. Then you get V squared over R, which is a centripetal acceleration, larger than your G, which is your acceleration due to gravity. Therefore, the answer for this question, which carry two marks, is as follows. The centripetal acceleration, which is V squared divided by the radius, must be larger than G. Or the centripetal force must be greater than the weight of the car. This will carry one mark. So the R, the contact force, from the track is not zero. This will carry another mark. In part C, the initial speed at which the car in B moves along the track is 3.8 meter per second, which you should underline. Then determine whether the car is in contact with the track at point Y. Show your working. The first mark, this question can carry three marks. The first mark is to write down the relationship between the energy. Ekx is a kinetic energy at x. Eky is a kinetic energy at y. The Epy is a gravitational potential energy at y. This will carry one mark. So this is the equation. Then after that, you can divide both sides of the equation by m and multiply both sides of the equation by 2. This will give you vy squared equals to vx squared minus 2gh. This will carry another mark. Substituting the value which is given to you in the question into this equation will give you 1.5 meter per second. This means the speed of the car at y is 1.5 meter per second. To know whether the car was still on the track or not, we calculate the centripetal acceleration based on 1.5 meter per second. Centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. Therefore, equals to 1.5 square divided by 0 0.31. This will give you 7.3 m meter per second square. So the car will not stay on in contact with the track and fall off at y because your centripetal acceleration is less than 9.8 meter per second. Your centripetal acceleration is only 7.2 meter per second. Alternatively, you can also calculate the speed for the car to stay in contact with the track. For the car to stay in contact with the track, we know that R must be greater than zero. R is the contact force. So MV squared divided by R, the radius of the circle, must be greater than MG. You can cancel off your M. So your V is equal, V must be greater than square root of GR. You substitute the value of G and R into the equation, you get 1.74 meter per second. This means that the car must move at a speed larger than 1.74 meter per second to stay on track. So the car will fall off the track since the velocity of y is only 1.5 meter per second, which is less than 1.74 meter per second. This will carry the alternative one mark. So you can either check whether the car stay in track based on the centripetal acceleration, which is here, or the centrip or the speed of the car. Then in part D. Suggest with the reason, but without calculation, whether your conclusion in C would be different for a car of mass 460 gram, moving with the same initial speed. This question asks you to relate whether M, the mass, affects the conclusion. The conclusion in C is independent of the mass of the car. So that you have the same conclusion. This is answer, which carry one mark for the question. Or you can say that the mass M cancel off in the equation. As you can see from here, the mass will cancel off. So the conclusion is the same. So you can also say the mass makes no difference. 